Just a quick word, stay tuned after today's episode to hear our iTunes review contest winners. But first, this week's episode. Solve the World, a fictional adventure told in 100 episodes. Episode 40, 72 Hours. Transcript of the encounter between Jennifer Firth and controller Yasmin Stormock. Day one of Jennifer's subjugation. Yasmin, thank you for coming to us. I speak for our community when I say I'm thankful you're here and looking forward to spending time with you the next couple of days. Jennifer, where are my friends? Yasmin, the gentleman is with my companion, Pavel, and we're waiting for a German speaker to come in before we start our line of questioning on the boy. Do you understand? Jennifer, I'd like to be with them. Yasmin, I can assure you they're fine. No one's going to hurt them. They're in good hands. Our hands. Here's what's happening, Jennifer. You want to go to the Druidry. My community, our community, focuses much of our attention on dissuading individuals from joining the Neo-Cult. We have an agreement with the center and the local government. If we physically encounter potential joiners once they're in the parking lot, which remains publicly owned, by the way, then we may question them for three days before those individuals may enter the Druidry Center. I want to be clear with you, Jennifer. If, at any time, you wish to leave, you may do so. We are not holding you against your will. I repeat, we are not holding you against your will. But, if you desire to enter the center, you'll need our Certificate of Completion, which will dutifully present you after you've lodged 72 hours with us. Any questions? Jennifer, when will I see my friends again? Yasmin, we've spent many, many, many sessions sculpting the next 72 hours for you to provide you with the most multi-sensory information possible. Our studies have shown that until you've reached the decompression point, that is to say the point at which you need to verbally process all the information you've taken in, it's best not to have the distraction of peers. Therefore, It generally falls that we'll reintroduce you to your comrades on the evening of the second night. That's if everything goes to plan. But if the decompression point isn't reached, then reunion with peers doesn't happen until after the 72 hours. Understood? Jennifer. Yasmin, let's get started. Here's how today's Socratic session works. I'll ask you a series of questions. You answer me. Once you've answered every question on my list, we're done. We also want to be open, honest, and compassionate with you. We don't want to ask you anything that we wouldn't ask ourselves. So, at any point, if you have questions for me, I'll do my best to answer them. And, if during any questions you'd like to hear how I'd answer the question, then I'd be happy to help in that situation as well. If you feel uncomfortable with a particular question, you may say pass, and we'll return to it at the end of the session. If you decide to be confrontational and not answer any questions, well then I'll just repeat myself ad nauseum until you decide to answer, and we'll have a very long day. Jennifer, have you ever had anyone never answer any questions? Yasmin, no. We had a lady once, much like you, but older, maybe in her 30s. She came in here with the thought that she'd just give us the silent treatment. I think, I believe she lasted 14 hours, something like that. But you know what? The beautiful thing was that once she finally broke down and started answering questions, interacting with us, 
this remarkable, intelligent, thoughtful, dare I say, vivacious woman came out. And you know what? She left us after 40 hours, went right back home, decided that Druidry was not for her. A happy ending. All right, well, here we go. My name is Yasmin Stormach. I am your controller today. Shall we begin? Jennifer. Yasmin, shall we begin? Jennifer, I've been tortured before. Okay, I don't appreciate being held against my will. Yasmin, but you're not being held against your will. You can leave anytime you'd like. Jennifer, you won't let me see my friends. Yasmin, have you ever been to a theme park, Jennifer? Jennifer, yes. Yasmin, when you go on a ride, let's say the best, most popular ride at the park, you have to get in line first, right? Jennifer. Yasmin, of course you do. And the more popular the ride, the longer the wait. Think of these three days as the line to get onto the ride. Except, the ride is horrible. It might kill your body. And it most certainly will kill your mind. Jennifer, what's your question? Yasmin, my first question is, what's your name? Jennifer, you know my name. Yasmin, I'd like it to be on the official transcript. What's your name? Jennifer, my name is Jennifer. Yasmin, last name? Jennifer, Piggly Wiggly. Yasmin, are you being serious with me, Jennifer? Jennifer, no, no, I am not. Yasmin, did you just tell me a lie? Jennifer, why, yes. Yes, I did, Yasmin. Yasmin, okay. Can we get Cole in here, please? Jennifer, who's Cole? Yasmin, he's our lie detector test operator. Ah, that was fast, Cole. Cole. Yeah, well, the others are going better, so I was listening in on this one. Yasmin. Already. Cole. Smooth operation. Looks like you picked the short straw today. Yasmin. Great, great. I'm up for the challenge. Cole. Would you please raise your arm so I can apply this? Jennifer. What if I say no? Cole. Then both of us have to work longer hours today. Yasmin. People often come here and they think it's a fence they have to climb over. It's not, Jennifer. You'll get way more out of this than you put in. We've done the research. Later, you'll see a video from people that have been through this process, have come out the other side. Nine times out of ten, the folks thank us for our work. We're not doing this for us. There's no special something we're trying to boil out of you. You've said you were tortured. Tell me, how is this similar to that? Jennifer. Cole, lift your arm one more time for me. Thank you. Now, can you state your name so I can get an initial recording? Jennifer. Jen. Cole. Good. We should be up and running, Miss Stormach. Yasmin. Thank you, Cole. Jen, when people are hooked up to lie detectors, they're three times more likely to tell us the truth. We know it's hard on day one to gain your trust, so we're trying to speed up the process. The lie detector helps us get to our destination sooner. Now, would you please tell us your last name? Jennifer. It's Firth. Yasmin. Firth. Spelled F-I-R-T-H? Jennifer. F-U-R-T-H. Like in the word further. Yasmin. Ah, thank you. Jennifer Firth. Where are you from? Jennifer. Buttsville. Yasmin. Jennifer. Where are you from? Jennifer. Louisiana. Yasmin. How old are you? Jennifer. 17. Wait, no. 18? Yasmin, you're not sure? Jennifer, mm, birthdays weren't a big deal in my household. Yasmin, do you know when your birthday is, Jennifer? Jennifer, mm, yes. Yasmin, would you mind telling me what day it is? Jennifer, pass. Yasmin, okay, good, that's fine, that's fine. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate if you have boundaries that you're uncomfortable crossing right now. We'll get back to that question at the end of our session. Now, would you like to tell me something about your parents? Their names? Professions? Jennifer. Mm, pass. Yasmin. How about school? What was the name of the high school you attended? Jennifer. Pass. Yasmin. Aunts? Uncles? Any relatives you'd like to talk about? Jennifer. Pass. Yasmin. Are you interested in druidry because you're trying to escape your past? Miss Firth. Jennifer. No. I'm not escaping anything. Coming here wasn't my idea. Yasmin, whose idea was it? Jennifer, the little man's. Yasmin, the little man? And what is his name? Jennifer, mm, pass. 
Yasmin, these passes are piling up, Jennifer. They're piling up. But that's okay. We've evidently started with a delicate subject. Let's talk about beliefs. Do you believe in God, Jennifer? Jennifer, are you some kind of church or something? Is that what this is about? Yasmin, would my answer change yours? Jennifer, no, it would just explain a lot. Yasmin, can you answer my question? Jennifer, what, do I believe in God? I don't know. Do you? Yasmin, I didn't for the first 29 years of my life. Jennifer, and then you met Jesus. Yasmin, no, then I met the devil. Do you believe in the devil, Jennifer? Jennifer, I believe there are bad people. Maybe one of them is the devil. Yasmin, do you think these bad people may be possessed by the devil? Jennifer, how would I know something like that? Doesn't the devil work in mysterious ways? Yasmin, <laughs> I believe that sentiment is usually attributed to God. Do you believe in karma? Jennifer, like when good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people? Yasmin, yes, that's a very, very good definition. Jennifer, then no, I don't believe in karma. Yasmin, why not? Jennifer, because I've seen bad things happen to good people. Yasmin, are you thinking of someone in particular? Jennifer, I knew this girl, um, to Karen. She was born on the streets, I think pretty much an orphan, and she kept getting caught up by all these schemes. I think all she wanted was to be wanted, you know? Uh, to be important. And, and the world didn't want her. No one did. I know I didn't. Yasmin, that sounds like a hard situation. Do you feel some shame about that? Jennifer, yes. Yasmin, in general, would you say that you have a lot of regrets in life? Jennifer, I... <sighs> I used to think no. But lately... I guess if I'm being honest, yeah, I, I do have a lot of regrets. Yasmin, what's your biggest? Jennifer, pass. Can't make it that easy for you. Yasmin, do you fear making bad decisions? Jennifer, not really. If I did, I think I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Yasmin, and what is it that you're doing? Jennifer, solving the world. Yasmin, don't you think that's a little precocious? How does one go about doing that? Solving the world. Jennifer, mm, that's two questions. Yasmin, why not answer both? Jennifer, fine. It doesn't have to be precocious. That's just bad marketing. Yasmin, hmm. Excuse me, I don't think I understand. What do you mean? Jennifer, I think shouldn't we all be doing what I'm doing? I think everyone should be trying to figure out this place. Yasmin, I think everyone is. Jennifer, really? All right. You tell me, what's the point of life? Yasmin, that's a big question. Jennifer, too precocious for you? Yasmin, no, it's just, I could go a lot of directions with it. Jennifer, well, choose one. Yasmin, okay, I think the point of life is to follow the right boss. Jennifer, hmm, sounds like a philosophy of fear to me. Yasmin, does it? How so? Jennifer, you're assuming that there are these powerful bosses controlling everything, and that one of them is going to win. Yasmin, and what does that have to do with fear? Jennifer, you're scared you'll be caught on the wrong side. Yasmin, Jennifer, it sounds to me like you're the scared one. Jennifer, boo, that's not fair, that doesn't answer my question. Yasmin, how is it not fair? You asked me a question, I answered it, and you criticized me for it. Jennifer, I wasn't criticizing. Yasmin, maybe not, not really. But you were being defensive. Shall we move on? Jennifer. Yasmin, question. Who do you love? Jennifer, um... Pass. Yasmin, why? Jennifer, it's personal. Yasmin, maybe, but it's usually a question people like to answer. Jennifer, well, not me. Pass. Yasmin, how about the opposite? Who do you fear? Jennifer, wouldn't hate be the opposite of love? Yasmin, not necessarily. Who do you fear, Jennifer? Jennifer, you know, there... There was this neighbor guy. He came over a lot when I was a kid, and he was always so insistent. He wanted me, like, really badly to fear, or hate, whatever, the communists. He'd go on these long rambles about reds and pinkos and soviets. But, uh, I don't, I don't know. I liked hearing his ideas and his speeches made me smile. And the hate, the fear, it never really stuck. 
I don't think I have the type of personality to really hate anyone. Yasmin. Hey, maybe not. But everyone fears someone. It doesn't have to be someone big or tough. Just someone that, if they showed up right here, today, you might be afraid of what they would say or do to you. For instance, my husband, you met him in the parking lot, Pavel. He has an identical twin, Barnabas. They do everything together, always have. When Pavel and I were courting, it became clear to me that Barnabas didn't really like me. I knew that if he didn't come around, if I didn't win him over, then Pavel and I would never get married. So, every time I was around Barney, I froze. I choked up. I was petrified of what he'd say or what he'd even think of me at every moment. Who do you know, Jennifer, that if they walked through this door and started listening to all your answers, you would be petrified, just like me and Barney? Jennifer, there's, there's some people that don't like me. I wouldn't want them to be in the room with me. Yasmin. Maybe, but that's not really it, is it, Jennifer? You're holding back. Jennifer. Okay, I... Never mind. Yasmin. What about Taryn? Jennifer. Who? Yasmin. The girl you said just wanted to be wanted. What if she were here right now? Would you fear her? Jennifer. Nope. Yasmin. Have you ever had a boyfriend? Jennifer. No. Yasmin. Ever kissed a boy? Jennifer. Yes. Yasmin. Did you like it? Jennifer. Ah! Yasmin. Sorry. Believe it or not, the question's on my paper. Jennifer. So I have to answer it or listen to you ask me it again later? Yasmin. Yes, that's pretty much how these things go. Jennifer. Then, yes. I liked it. Yasmin. How many different people would you estimate you've kissed? Jennifer. Oh my word! Why is that a question you care about? Yasmin. The questions are built to make you feel uncomfortable with yourself, as well as break down whatever current lens you have of the world, Jennifer. Jennifer. Lens? Why would you want to break my lens? Yasmin. Your outlook on life. Jennifer. Okay, why would you want to break my outlook on life? Yasmin. Precisely. Our goal is is to convince you not to join the Druidry. Our assumption is that your current convictions about life make the Druidry appealing. We're trying to cause you to self-reflect, get you to recall what got you here, and then to accept that whatever you're looking for, whatever it is, Jennifer, it won't be fulfilled at the Druidry. Jennifer, how do you know it won't? Yasmin, because I'm a former member. I'm in recovery. Jennifer. Recovering? Yasmin. Yes. Think of it like alcoholism. You can be sober for 30 years, but you're still an alcoholic in recovery. Jennifer. Listen, I don't care about the stupid druidry. The only reason I came was because a leprechaun healed my friend in return for us taking him here. Yasmin. No. If that was the case, you would have left him and gotten out of here hours ago. Jennifer. You know, when people tell me not to do things, I just want to do the opposite. Yasmin. Maybe so. Maybe that's true. But you would have thrown in the towel already once the questions got tough. So you're in this to win this. For some reason. Tell me why. Jennifer. Is that question on your sheet? Because if it isn't, then I don't really have to answer it, do I? Yasmin. No, it's not on my sheet. I have permission to go off script when the situation merits it. Jennifer. And this is a meritable situation? Yasmin. Figuring out why you're here is of utmost importance to us. Jennifer. That's what's most important to you? Not the fact that I just told you a leprechaun healed my friend? Yasmin. Is there a reason that should be important to me? Jennifer. Uh, reason one. That the woman you're interviewing right now believes in leprechauns, apparently. And reason two. She believes that at least one leprechaun has magical abilities? That seems like that should be important to you. You know, if you want to get inside me. Yasmin, how is that relevant to figuring out why you're here right now? Jennifer, I told- I just told you why it's relevant. Yasmin, no. You told me how it is you came to New Grange and the Druidry Center. Not why you're here right now. Jennifer, because you're making me sit here. Yasmin, no, Jennifer. No. You know that's not true. You can leave whenever you wish. Jennifer, okay, then I wish to leave. Yasmin, that's fine. As long as you underst- Cole, please let me take this off before you get up. You can harm the equipment. Yasmin, you understand you will not be given access to the druidry. Jennifer. Okay, the boy I'm with 
He had some sort of dream last night. Said that I needed to go to the druids to join them. Yasmin, that doesn't explain anything. Jennifer, I... I trust dreams. Yasmin, why? Jennifer, because there's no one else to trust. Yasmin, no one? Really? Jennifer, people just want things. Isn't that what this place is all about? Right now, you want something from me. That's why you're talking to me. We all want things, and if we find people that want the same things we want, we either fight them or we join forces with them. Yasmin, interesting, interesting. What about God? You don't trust him? Jennifer, I told you already, I don't know anything about religion. Yasmin, try to look at it this way. That's my phone! Yes, I kept it in my pocket in case someone decided to call. Let's see. Caller ID says it's Atticus. Give it to me! You can have it right now. Just give up. Don't go to the druids. That's blackmail! It's mine! Give it! Doesn't matter what it is. Do you want the phone or not? Yes, I want it! And you won't go to the druid center. Uh, I... Uh, uh, just... Let me... Uh... Oops. Too bad. Maybe Atticus will leave a message. Who is Atticus, Jennifer? No one, he's no one. Just a friend. A boyfriend? No, just a regular friend. But you don't have any friends, Jennifer. Yes, I do. If you can't trust anyone, if the world's made up of just different people colliding when they want stuff, then true friendship can't exist. That's not fair. You're twisting my words. No, I'm helping you to see the obvious implications of your manifest beliefs. I have friends. Who do you trust, Jennifer? Ludwig. I trust Ludwig. And Jorge Robles. What if Ludwig chooses not to go to the Druid Center? What if we break him? That's fine. That's his prerogative. You'd feel betrayed. Unlisted number. You're popular today. Yeah, of course. I haven't gotten calls for days, and now they all call when I can't answer. Is that how you view the world, ironically? No. Then tell me, what's the world about? I don't know. If I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't be gallivanting around in Europe. I wouldn't be talking to you. Tell me about the leprechaun. No, I'm done talking. I, I'm done. Tell me about the leprechaun. No. Tell me about the leprechaun. No, that question's not on your page. I don't have to answer it. Jennifer, tell me about the leprechaun. Miss Firth, tell me about the leprechaun. There's no such thing as leprechauns, Yasmin. Get over it. You don't believe that? Sure, yes, I do. She's lying. Thank you, Cole, for stating the obvious. Jennifer, tell me about the leprechaun. Do you believe in any other myths? 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 I want to believe in Leviathan. Good. Tell me about that. Ah, fine. At the beginning of time, God created three immortal creatures. A bird, a land monster, and a sea creature. An evil man killed the land monster, the behemoth. The bird went away when God called him home, but Leviathan stayed. The... Leviathan... <laughs> I'm so tired. It's okay. Everything, Jennifer. Everything's going to be okay. Do you know how I know that? No. Because I know how the world is solved. <laughs> I don't believe you. Why not? Because you're too cruel. I don't know your story, Jen. I don't know what you've been through. But it seems, for being still so young, you've had a lot of life experience. I'd bet you've seen what, unfortunately, we all see sooner or later. The world is broken. It's been broken for a long time. Nothing works like it should. And so friends, who should always be trustworthy, betray us. They hurt us. Our family, who should love us unconditionally, burden us with years and years of baggage and expectations. 
Our leaders, who should be fearless zealots for righteousness, are proven time and time again to be sham artists. And when we finally find goodness, a sense of awe, an experience of wonder somewhere in the world, maybe in the form of a tender hug or a kind word, when we finally think we're secure with a good thing, we're hit in the face, beaten black and blue. There's no justice in this world, and there's no mercy. I'm here because I've seen the pits of hell. I know how beautiful that wild green flame looks at first, but it turns so sour, Jennifer, and burns without remorse. I work tirelessly here for you and people like you, because although I don't know you, I love you. I love you enough to do everything that lawfully is in my power to get you not to taste the fires of hell. The Druid Center is not just the next stop on your world tour, Jennifer. It'll be the end of you. And you may think I'm being cruel, but honest to God, I'm being as loving and as merciful to you as I know how to be. Prove it. Prove what? Show some mercy. You want your cell phone. I don't know what I want. Okay. Okay, it's okay. Cole, I think we're done for today. What? You didn't even get to the questions about Cole. Cole, I think we're done for today. Norman won't like this. He's given me the authority to make judgment calls. This is my call. End transcript. Jennifer went right to bed. She was exhausted. It was just past 3 p.m. local time. It didn't matter. She had to escape. To sleep. To the kingdom of her dreams. Jen slept for something like 16 hours. Because of the length of rest, her dream story ran out of plot. It played out as it always did with the boy, now an old man, making it into the kingdom at the top of the mountain. But Father Thomas hadn't dictated what happened next, once the boy was in the kingdom in the clouds. So Jen's mind filled in the gaps. Not with story. There was no plot twists or third act surprises. There were just these shades of feelings. Shades of color. Smells and variations on smiles. It was the imagination's feeble attempt to comprehend heaven in shadow form. The taste of it, the small breeze of it, the wink of its presence, left Jen renewed in the morning. Renewed in form and logic. Yasmin Stormach was right. Jen always had a choice. The choice in front of her was whether or not to abandon going to the place that dreams were urging her towards. She didn't know why Robin dreamed that it was Jen's destiny to go to the Druids, but the fact that that came to him in a dream was a more compelling reason to go than any scare tactic not to. When Yasmin called her back into the interrogation chamber, Jen was fully armed with her personal security system. And, by the way, why did Jen always end up being stuck in such drab rooms? Yasmin found easy enough ways to wiggle under Jen's skin yesterday, just with a few forceful questions. The problem was Jen's tongue. It stirred the conversation, it fed Yasmin's arsenal, gave her more ammunition to spray Jen with. Nevertheless, Jen had survived day one. Even got off easy once the waterworks came on. Now was the time to buckle down, show this institution the balls this teenage girl had. Jennifer Dash grit her teeth and her soul. She'd outlast them all. Yasmin began much in the same way as the day before. Question on top of question. Cole was back, the lie detector fitted onto Jen's good arm. But it didn't matter. Jennifer Dash shut her mouth, and kept it so. Question after question, hour after hour. She didn't budge. She didn't break. Five hours in, rather than asking for a bathroom break, she peed herself. She thought nothing of it, but it sure scared off Cole, the lie detector reader. All the while, Jen stared at Yasmin with dead eyes, and a smirky grimace. This was a game. This was a game Jen could win. She had a choice. She could win this game or lose it. And the spoils go to the one who endures. 
After 10 hours, Yasmin brought in Pavel, her lunatic husband. He played good cop, and Yasmin bit down, went full screamer bad cop on her. By that point, though, Jen smiled in her heart of hearts. They asked a lot of questions about her past, fixating especially on the Orion Adventure schooner. But Jen saw the ruse, was able to anticipate every pressure point the mad couple would leech onto to try to break her. Jen wondered if this was how Miles Faw saw the world all the time, with eyes that saw everything like a series of chess moves. Transcript of the encounter between Jennifer Firth with controllers Pavel and Yasmin Stormach. Day three of Jennifer's subjugation. Yasmin, congratulations, Jennifer. It's 1 p.m. You've officially made it 48 hours. You're on the home stretch, baby. Just 24 hours of silence to go. Pavel, but some exciting things are in store for you in this, your last day with us, Jennifer. We've got a couple different movies we'd like you to watch. Yasmin, the plan was for you to watch the movies yesterday, but since you wouldn't answer my questions, we've been stuck here in limbo. Pavel, but not today. We've got some special guests for you that we hope will break your silence. Jennifer. Pavel, okay, Maguire, show Miss Babadin, please. Lilith, hello, Jen. Jennifer, I didn't, I didn't think you'd come in here. I didn't think you would subjugate yourself to these people. Lilith, I've worked with one of their proxy institutes before. We're on the same side. Most of the time. I wasn't thrilled to pick up the bill for the private jet you rented. That was a costly exercise. I expected the cell phone. Thought a rented car was likely. But I gotta give it to you. You really pulled one off with the jet. Jennifer, you didn't give me any boundaries. Lilith, that's true. And I don't care that you took that liberty. I tried calling you but then these people return my call in your stead. Jennifer, are you here to convince me to stop? Lilith, in a way, but my motives are different. How's your new hand? Jennifer, I don't know. It hurts. Lilith, you missed your last appointment in Zurich. Jennifer, I know. Lilith, it's not the sort of thing you can put off. Jennifer. Lilith, I'm taking Robin with me. Jennifer, what? Why? What for? Lilith, I told you, I need a helper. Robin's untied to family, to friends. He's like you in that way. Jennifer, so he's not going to the Druid Center. Lilith, no. I talked with him. He's coming with me. Jennifer, what about Ludwig? Yasmin, let's bring him in too. McGuire, would you fetch him for us? Ludwig, hello Jennifer. Pavel, tell her what conclusion you came to, buddy. Ludwig, Jen, I'm not going. Pavel, be specific. Where exactly are you not going? Ludwig, I'm not going to the Druidry. Jennifer, why? Ludwig, I've got a girlfriend and two kids back home. I can't leave them. Jennifer, you have kids? You never told me that. Ludwig, you never asked. Jennifer. Lilith, come with us. Come with me. I found the key. I can translate the Croatoan now. It'll all start happening fast soon. I don't want you to be left behind. But if you go to that center, there's no predicting if I'll be able to get you when you're ready. I may be tied up. Jennifer. Lilith, I'm going to that center. I have to. Lilith, that's your choice. Pavel. Okay, thank you both. Miss Babbitt, Ludwig, McGuire, will you walk them out? Yasmin, we've got one more person we'd like you to talk to, Jennifer. Come on in. Father Thomas. Hello, Jennifer. Oh. Hi. How are you today? I've been better. I lost my hand on Pishtaco's Island. I know. The boy, this little lost boy, he had a dream that I was supposed to go to the center. I heard. I got on a plane as soon as they contacted me. Why? Do you know why the tidal waves stopped, Jennifer? No. I stopped them. How? Robles left an idol. Carved image on the Orion. 
Okay, so... It's God was angry with us. What? What? Huh? There are angry spirits, powerful beings just under the covers of this world. We can't see them, but they're there. I... I don't know, Father. I, I don't know if I believe that. Search your heart. I... I just don't know. The people at the Druidry, they worship the bad spirits. They'll harm you, Jennifer. I'm not religious. Doesn't matter. Okay, okay. I just came to say that. You make your own decision. But I wanted you to hear it from me. Thomas, how can I believe unless I see stuff for myself? You're right, that makes sense. But also, actions have consequences. Sometimes those consequences are not what you expect. But once things are in motion, they can't always be stopped. Are you okay, Father? I've never been better. Why weren't you in Peru with the others? Jennifer, all that matters now is that I'm okay, and you're okay. But please, don't go. Nothing good will come from it. I can't just take everyone's word for it. I need to solve the world myself. I need to see. I need to feel myself. I can't trust your experience, whatever it is. I only have this one life, Father. I know. Don't waste it. <sighs> I liked you better when you doubted everything. I'm still the same person. You know what? I'm, I'm done talking. You can take him away. I'm done. Jennifer, please don't cut me out. Jennifer. 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 Jennifer, don't go. Hey everybody, Solve the World is produced by myself, Dante Stack. All the sound effects and music we use for this program are under Creative Commons licenses and can be found on our show notes page at DanteStack.com. A big thanks to everyone who was a part of our week-long iTunes review contest. And without further ado, here are the winners. iTunes username Justin Boats won our raffle this week. Justin, all you have to do is write me an email at DanteStack.com to claim your prize. I promise the email won't be used at all. I won't be adding you to a newsletter or anything like that. I just need an email address to send the Amazon gift card to. The other winner, the person who wrote the best review of the week, goes to Adrian Elijah Davis. Adrian wrote, So I started listening to this, and now my dreams are strange? Question mark. I'm not complaining, I've lost my hand multiple times in dreams, and sometimes Jen Dash is Dana Scully, and someone is Fox Mulder, but it's good. Keep up the sweet work! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Adrian, I had to give this to you because of that first sentence. So I started listening to this, and now my dreams are strange? Like, that's a... <laughs> that, that's clearly a statement. But you're somehow asking me if your dreams are strange. It made me laugh out loud. Also, I appreciate Solve the World's comparison to X-Files. Thank you for your review, Adrian. Same thing with you. Just send me an email at DanteStack.com. Guys, get on the bus. Keep those reviews coming in. Who knows? I might just randomly uh, give you another gift certificate if I like yours. I don't know. Who's to say? Jennifer Dash is going to the Druids. Next time on Solve the World.